uh, I guess I can share my screen. I guess you guys got through a PR or two last week without me. Yep. Hank seems to be revising this. He's not joined. He's messaging me, but he hasn't joined yet. Incoming. What's this? Uh, he's revised 111. Is that shared right? As 145. Uh, yeah, that's right. Hank and I had met, um, had an offline uh, um, meeting between last week and this week and talked about uh, the 123 or whatever. And 145 is the is his action item and 144 was my action item of our meeting okay can i close 123 then i would uh, hank yeah this hi this is hank uh, i would not close it right now because there are okay. comments in there and they are very difficult to find again maybe um what if you just reference uh the older one from the newer one in the comments and that makes it easy to find did that it references uh, in my comments uh, in the initial comment uh, this PR is 123 uh, I actually don't know what the new number is uh, 145 yes okay yeah so it's, it's findable because it's right there yeah okay yeah then closing is fine I just thought that the, the, the thoughts uh, crossed my mind but I was <laughs> not I did not dare <laughs> okay just keeps track of what we're doing so um let's just start with this one then if that's okay or you want to do the 144 um, first uh either is okay i think 144 might be easier to do first just because if we agree with the direction 144 is going then it requires another change to 145 but uh, in terms of the style but Um, so Hank has a comment on this one, and this is one of the main questions we had for people. And the only reason why reviewing the other one before this one might make sense is because they, they, they are interrelated. Um, previously in the document, there were these uh, two uh, rows, which you can see in red up at the top, 152, 53, value generation and tester awareness. Um, Currently, the attester awareness was not used. That's what would be used in Hank's pull request, uh, but this uh, row is in the table here. Um, one of the observations that we had was that um, every example, not just the one that Hank's, Hank is adding, but every example, um, there can be two possibilities for any particular claim, right? One is that the uh, value was created before evidence was done, and the attester can actually get what time that was created. So take a case where you have a GPS, your GPS might be uh, in a little peripheral across some particular bus. And when you boot up, you read the value from the peripheral and the peripheral also tells you what timestamp it was based on because GPSs get to their own time from satellites. And so you can get VG long before uh, you boot even. The, you know, the, the VG may be even before the boot time uh, of the main processor. Um, then, you could also have a case where you can't tell, and so when you boot up, you don't have any idea how long that value has been that way for. And so as a workaround, you use the attester awareness, which is the time that you're creating the claim. Right. And those two possibilities apply to every example. And so how do we do that without invalidating all of the pictures and so we, or without uh, causing lots of duplication? So one approach that we discussed was to say, well, let's combine the events and put it in the explanation of events saying it could be either way. Um, Hank has a comment at the at the bottom of your screen now, um, which says that it's not distinguishable by, by the receiver. And one of the questions that we had that I wanted to that, we, that Hank and I uh, discussed that I wanted to think about some more because I said what I wonder is if there is a case if it actually should be different times and committing it, how would you encode the difference into a claim set? So you could do it by somehow having, let's say that you had two different metadata types for two different types of times. Mm -hmm. um, another way to do it is to say you put in a time and then you have a separate piece of metadata that talks about um, your confidence in it or the time resolution. And that would be more like 
um, what Lauren, I think Lawrence in the EAT document, you have like what type of bus it was received across. Was the bus trusted or was it inside or outside? And so that's like an orthogonal piece of metadata. And so exactly how you would encode the difference or your confidence in the time, time correct, the correctness of the time could be a different value. And I haven't done anything about that because I want to think about it, but that was the discussion we had. And I don't know if you have any ideas. So, so if, if I can repeat back to what I think you said, um, on the one hand, you suggested that the, the, this time, whether it's value created or value generated, um, essentially might be encodable with a, uh, an error amount, meaning I think it's around now, but it could be a little bit up as much as this much before. Um, another and the other part, not mutually exclusive, is that the claim would say, well, it came across this kind of a bus, and so that implicitly means that it must have at least taken no, you know, some amount of time. The, no. the latter part is already true, meaning I think uh, Lawrence had some attribute in the <clears throat> – somebody had an attribute in the EAT document that already had that. I was giving an analogy that you could have yet another piece of, death of metadata – yeah, it's similar to that one, but not what type of bus it came across, but um, whether it came from some place that has its own timestamp or not. Okay, right. Yeah, because even if it came across a bus, it may or may not have its own timestamp, right? Right. Okay, I understand. So that was just an example. Is what yeah, that saying. was just an example. So what, so the fact that we already have that. multiple pieces of orthogonal metadata about the same claim set, this would this it could be done as another one of those, and I again. I did not propose any text to deal with that fact, but that and that is what Hank is highlighting here, is that is a point that we had discussed, um, but there's nothing in the text that talks about this. Um, and how should we deal with this is kind of an open question. Okay, so I got you. Um, so we don't know whether or not we need to put this other claim in about the time having originated from another device and um right there's uh at least two ways we could go is with that this a document you maybe more to but, I, i'm just trying to think do, do, it, 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 it sounds only affects, like a specific claim a specific claim may want to detail this and it might want to standardize the way in which that is detailed but I'm not clear that the architecture, uh, this sounds to me like another policy for appraisal rather than uh, a specific the, the, in the time. The graph. meta question here is whether we want to combine these two rows or not. Okay, So this is ah, showing okay. in here is if you combine the rows, it implies that there is some other way to tell. If you don't combine the rows, then you have to have text that says, in this example, we're going to use VG. In this example, we're going to use AA. In this example, we're going to use VG. And we got to make sure that across the examples, we arbitrarily pick one or the other and explain that that could have been the other one. Okay. I don't have a great opinion either. Although, <laughs> uh, although I, 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 I feel that having more labels and using them, not using them, is better than having fewer labels and having to add text all over the place. Sorry, other way around. If you have fewer, if you have uh, more labels, it requires a bunch of text in various places. If you have fewer labels, you only have text in one place. Um, okay, I see your point. Um, if you only have one, say... one label, then the text goes here. That's line 1152, which could be, a, you can see it has three sentences right now, and it could have, you know, five sentences or something. But somewhere else, someone has to tell you whether or not this was um, generated by the, in your example, by the GPS or by the tester. If we go with the combined place, then each example does not. You just have to say here that every example could be either one. If you have two different rows, then every example has to say, we're using, you know, VG, but it could have been AA or something like that, because otherwise you'd think that it was inherent to that example, which it's not. Okay, I don't so that's why I was proposing combining. You haven't helped me decide. I'm still on the fence. I'm still sitting on the fence exactly. on this. So what about there are there some of other opinions from the group? I kind of like them separate. Uh, the reason it was a, 
a test your awareness. I think it goes back to the discussion from a while ago for handles. What happens if you generate a not some nonce or some value centrally, but you don't get it until later? Uh, now, I, th I know the point you're talking about is can you really tell the difference? Um, Neither of these is about the handle or receive time. You see in Hank's uh, PR, he's going to be adding another ID that's neither of these. Because right, in uh, if you're receiving a handle, AA and VG are both long before that point. And you might even know the delta between VG or AA and the handle received. And so that will show up in Hank's PR. So this is orthogonal to that. All right. That was my biggest worry when we originally came up with the tester awareness was that. So if it's handled another way, I don't really care. Yeah. So um, more and more, I would, uh, this is Hank's opinion. Um, I, I could, I can see how this could be collapsed and then specialized, for example, in eat that then deals with specific claims about that. We'll flesh that out again. I don't think that the architect has to be overly expressive. We have less growing pains if we keep the acronym. That's why entry is generated, but that's only only a super micro knit. I think it's it's especially easy not to uh, edit all the text again and then arbitrarily choose AA and uh, V uh, whatever at some point. Um, I think it's it's literally easier the way Dave is proposing it right now. And uh, as long as it's clear that there is some uh, attester uh, awareness there, and it says that literally, I'm fine. And then each can maybe deal with something that is appropriate for really uh, um, differentiating AA and uh, V something. Well, if I understood right, you have a weak preference for combining them into one event. Did I hear that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's point, a, any, nobody feels strongly on this one, including me, right? It's just, uh, I, I propose combining them because I think it's actually less text overall in the architecture document if you combine them. Uh, yeah. But again, none of us feel strongly, it sounds like. Okay, so are you happy? But I'm, yes, I'm, I would go for combining them at this point then. Um, so, uh, okay. and, and Hank's suggestion that we call it value generated. Yeah, it's consistent with uh, evidence generated or end of a generation, but like just okay. consistency with terms. That's all basically. Okay, I understand. You're saying keep the, in other words, collapse a, a AA into VG, but keep it called VG. Yeah, that's better. Okay, sure. Yeah. Right. That, I guess. So the explanation of the event is okay. All right, I, I understand. Okay, so is there something? So then later on, it's. Those are all the places that I changed, and, and those would be reverted in in Hank's proposal. Oh, I see. Because because right. it would still be VG. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, but it's only here. I mean, our document will not have to touch it if they don't want to. That's true. Yeah, because I think it is used in another document or two. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I don't know if you want to do this now, Michael, or can do it offline uh, in a because there's a there's like ten of them. Okay, I won't do it now. All right. Uh, okay. So we got this. Yeah, I'm probably just. You know well, this is the other notational question, the one that I said, if you, if, if we go with this style, it will affect uh, Hank's PR where he didn't use the stocks. So we were doing this in parallel, right? The observation yeah. here is that it would not be relevant if somebody were to say, take time EG and time NS and look at the delta between those two, right? That's not an interesting number because those two clocks are not synchronized, right? The time of sending and the time of say reception of something when your time clocks are not synchronized, you can get arbitrarily, you can get negative values and so on. And so this is to say that because you don't have a global synchronized clock, then you got to pay attention to making sure you don't subtract two events from different clocks that are not comparable. And so this one here, you can see that there's an A, V, or R suffix just added after each of the relevant ones, just to say that this is according to so-and-so's clock. And so you can only do subtraction between two things with the same suffix. That's all this is doing is it's adding that annotation for the non-synchronized clock case. So I would like to do it this way. Um, yes, we can do that. It makes the entire picture wider because you have to move some lines. I did look at that. And then, in fact, when I said it to Hank last week, should we do this? I actually used the word underscore, but. Okay. Uh, so because further down, it expands too much, like here. Yeah, like one, yep, 1248, right, right. So. Yeah. I, if people are okay, it just shows up as a lot more diffs because now every line has changed because the lines move farther apart. 
and I don't know if there's any, you know, 80 column issues or 70 column or whatever the RFC number is. I don't think so. Okay. We can try that. If people like that, then I, I agree that does make it a little bit easier to read. But the overall question is, are people okay with this annotation? So you'll see, for example, line, uh, red line 1246, green line 1254. You can see NS prime in here. I, the, whether we keep the prime or not, I think when we look at Hanks, we may want to argue that we keep the prime, but you can see NSR is different from NSV up in 1245 because they're different nonces. So maybe that should be NS prime underscore R, but again, and, and you'll see that's the approach that Hank took because there's different handles in his equivalent diagram. Because prime is a different clock is what and was yeah. indicating a different clock. No, it was indicating a balance. It was indicating a different a subsequent, a subsequent a subsequent value, right? Yeah, okay. You can see it's nonce one up above, and this is the time at which nonce two is being set. So it could be, you know, NS one, NS two, or something. We, we use prime in some of our documents. One of the issues yeah. is there will be times when you have prime prime or or prime one. So we might have a nomenclature issue with prime. I guess we can use double hash for getting it two, yeah. but once we get to three, that might be an issue. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm wondering if here we want to make it be like NS prime underscore R, which is that's another character to the width. <clears throat> but but this like is showing it. NS prime from relying party clock. Yes, because that right because so NS, for breaking yeah. the convention of identifying the clock uh, it should be RP or something. NSRP. It's, it's, so he's saying that it would be NS prime underscore R or or R. Yeah. Or, well, it, right. it, 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 twelve fifty four is missing a prime. That's all I'm pointing out right now. And we may want to add that back in. Um, and I think when you look at Hank's PR, you'll see maybe why. I'm my point is that the clock is the relying party's clock. Correct. That's the that's yeah. the R suffix. Uh, in twelve fifty four, it didn't. Send, uh, no, I also got to wonder if the suffixes are. I mean, they're underneath that particular line so presumably it's that clock but yeah right. but once you get into right. the text below it the talk and you can see like in line 1256 yeah. right yeah things like that right Has yeah, to process you, right. you have to say what's what right. Right. so okay right. so all right if you don't so, label them then it makes you wonder oh is that doing this incomparable clock comparisons and no 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 i checked they're all so the, all the deltas are between things in the same clock um and then the last nomenclature difference that you'll see between mine and hank's um, as you'll see in the document right now, you can see all the deltas are expressed as, you know, time A minus time B. And in Hank's PR, he has it as a delta parentheses A comma B. And my comment is we should just pick one and uh, use it. Whether it's a time A minus time B or delta A minus or A comma B. Honestly, I forgot to uh, uh, change the delta stuff. <laughs> I just missed that. Well, uh, I am okay with the threshold, I assume. Uh, I'm okay with either one. My question is, which uh, one do you think is actually clear to understand? I don't. Maybe, maybe when we look at the delta one, we can test yeah. if threshold makes sense there. If yeah. not, probably delta. And not not threshold, but I'm saying that the 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 in the middle of the thing, instead of using a subtraction, should we use a delta? With a comma instead of a a a, a minus. Yeah, I I, I was using uh, um, younger time minus older time, which results in a positive duration. Yeah. And so uh, uh, that could be something we can also try. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's clear. I think it's clear if you subtract the the okay. smaller number from the bigger number. So yes, the younger. Okay. So then we'll time keep it here. Minus older time yeah uh, so then we'll keep it here and we'll change the style in the pr that hank generated so all right scroll down a little bit um so you can see the so i answered a response to that one way you answered a response to that one um are you using the latest one or is it entered on farther down because what i had said is uh his comment huh. maybe you haven't um, hit enter yet let me just check here because I actually included a uh, suggestion. So what, let's see. Um, I'm checking. 
Uh, yeah, you're right. Hold on. You're right. I didn't hit submit review. All right, there you go. Please refresh. Okay. Um, there you go. So now let's and scroll down a little bit more so you can see the suggestion as well. Okay. So uh, uh, William was pointing out that uh, there is arguably an error in this inequality, which was already there before. Okay. Because you can see the the I would say equation, but inequality in the red and the green is the same. And he's pointing out that uh, there should be this other factor that's in there that's missing. And so, uh, yeah, so that's basically his suggestion is to change this line, which is orthogonal to the rest of the PR, but if people wanted the same one, then go ahead and commit the suggestion. My original comment was, well, I didn't change that before. You're right, but <laughs> maybe that's in a different PR. And I said, ah, it's only one line. Let's just do it here. So. Okay, so I'm going to suggest that we accept the PR and then we fix the diagram with the primes and the VC, VG. Uh, if you want, I can do that offline while we review Hanks just because it's a global search and replace and repush. But That would be uh, great. If you could do that, that would be great. Yeah. So then we can, uh, that'll just... take me like two minutes. Yeah. Okay. So let's do that. Um, Wait, this is a good fix. Thanks for doing this. Okay. So then this is Hank's PR. Hank, I don't know what this is about. Uh, this is about Thompson's. I just caught this, unfortunately, in my uh, pull request, but the lib updated and now it says main. And if it doesn't say main, it throws a warning. So this is not me. This is Thompson's lib. So this is an artifact that is just uh, logistics. So uh, I'll put that into the main. And if you do the rebase, like I suggested, then that will go away. Yes, if that it's in, what, in main, some... then that is what. And it's, it's just a GitHub change. So it's uh, now uh, common to uh, work on main. That's basically it. That's weird to call it main. OK. Yeah, also, I caught a uh, um, reference knit. Um, yeah, uh, so I fixed those two in the main uh, as well. Uh, so that's why I asked you to rebase. So ignore that. I, I put that into the master already. And if you do your rebase and push, then go away uh, okay. from that. Yeah, I can do this uh, afterwards. Um, so uh, also, I have this. I mean, this is just that Lawrence created these two reference because they look very uh, Fido esque. <laughs> Um, Lawrence, please check if your thing compiles before you commit, but that's okay, because I was like, why is this not compiling? It took me like three minutes to find out that author was missing. Uh, org is missing, sorry. Org was missing. That may be me. Yeah. That might have been me, because I'm, okay. I'm stupid that way. Uh, okay. But I thought I compiled it. But anyway, okay. So that was that. Uh, yeah, so... Um... Again, as uh, Dave highlighted, we had a small offline discussion and uh, we came to the resolution that handles is probably a third type that does not really fit nonce and timestamps. So uh, first paragraph here is about context. What's a handle, basically? Um, and uh, so Dave made some comments here. A change, actually. Yeah, thank you. Uh, English is better uh, kept with native speakers. So <laughs> <that's okay. laughs> yeah, mine is purely wordsmithing grammar. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, uh, that's always my come, of course. Um, so yeah, then I'm very very easy with the handles. Are handles are because why are they different? You cannot just claim it. You have to highlight why this is the case. It's just me being a little bit thorough. Uh, moving down a little bit, please. Um, and you can parse that one. Uh, yes, I didn't know what the right way to fix the grammar on this one was. Uh, okay, so if it's one, uh, since it's ninety six. What the sense is trying to say is, if you if you already have a current handle available, this is superseded by a new handle and therefore outdated. That's basically all the sense tries to say. And there's an event. So the handle received outdates old one and uh, supersedes it by a new one. Yeah, I know what you're trying to say. The sentence is really not working. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think because I wanted to tailor event into it and then it made it complicated. 
I don't know. Uh, uh, receipt of a new handle validates a previous handle. That, that, that correct? I before E except after C. Uh, is this a uh, receipt to the term? I was always writing reception because I did not know how to phrase it. Well, you can write reception or you can write receipt. What do you prefer, Dave? Um, receipt with a P. I, I think I agree. It's okay. I think receipt reads better. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just me uh, not knowing the right terms in English language here. So, but uh, thank you. Um, I like not only invalidate, but also outdates. Uh, that's why I wrote outdates and therefore invalidates. These are, but that's again, only me. If, if it's clear enough, uh, it probably it's fine. I, out, outdates is not a that common a word, I would say. I mean, it's a technically correct word, but Right, outdated is used, but outdates is not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was just weird. Okay. Yeah. Then just keep it the way it is. I think it's uh, shorter, more concise, and clear. That's always good. Uh, cannot be applied from pending reviews. I think that means someone else has. To, uh, what do you mean by your comment, Dave? But as a parents, where? Oh, mismatch parentheses. Uh, there is uh, okay. more opens than closes. Oh, yeah, cool. But uh, this, but the better question. This is when I was talking about. You can see delta with a comma, and if you replace the delta with time eg, if you put a minus, then you can delete the time the the delta open parenthesis. Yeah, that is absolutely correct. I would uh, agree that. Uh, and then, um, in this order, and, yeah, and then just for consistency, I'm, other examples, I would uh, replace validity duration with the word threshold with a capital T, just because that's how the other examples did it. Yeah, no, sorry, that is it and, is a and, validity and, duration, I think, and I'm also reusing that below, and I'm comparing it to something else, I think. Um, I know. Upstairs. You, you are not using a blow, which is the my next comment is missing from thirteen oh four. No, no, it, I'm defining it. And sorry, please. Thirteen oh four. The inequality should be something like uh, the delta on the right minus the delta on the left is less than threshold. So Ooh. it should be like this. Um. The delta that's on the right, so the, the HD, HD prime delta minus the HD EG delta. In other words, you have to reorder the phrases because the one on the right is bigger. And you do the subtraction, you put the bigger one first. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it has to be prime minus non-prime. Yeah, put that one at the beginning. Okay. And then put a subtraction. And then on the right side of the less than sign, put the word threshold. Yes. Now, now we've also, incorporated it. Also, it has to be uh, as a HD prime, which also should be HR. I'm very sorry about that. Is this old text? It doesn't really make sense to me. So does prime go first or R? You're saying? Prime has to go first because it's a bigger number. Otherwise, we create negative uh, yeah. numbers as a result. Um, yeah, that's also, that's, that's, that's a lot of errors in there. I'm confused. Um, Maybe it's an artifact. Just for consistency, Michael, with where the uh, spaces go, when we're doing the first delta, delete the space before it. In other words, in the other examples, we don't have a space around the equal sign when we're just computing a delta. And so the same thing at the end of the line there is, yeah, that one. So, but before Excellent. you com before you commit this, could you scroll up uh, at this as a, um, suggestion? Could you scroll up again, please? Because I am in line, sorry, too far, too far, too far. Below, below, below. And line uh, 1301, yep. I'm defining validity duration, which is mm, okay. 
time HR prime plus offset minus time HR. That's why I'm using I the see. duration below. And it's I not see. the same, so that I would uh, like to retain it, please, here in this case. Okay, so change the word threshold back. Okay, I understand. Thank you. That's fine with me. And then the same thing in the line that we were, the long line, yeah. And this one? And still, yeah, I same thing there, because it's the same, same number, yeah. Yes. Time EG is before time HR again, correct? So HR is the bigger yes. number. So we should. It is first. Yeah. It, no, it should be. It was, no, no, no. It, it's time HR instead of H. Uh, actually, yeah, it should be time HR. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I agree. Yeah, yeah, because in line 1302, there's the same error. Yeah, yeah. Time exactly. HR is after time, yeah. So we it's backwards. Six, seven. Well, that's because yeah. you had, Yeah, sorry. Because delta might be assumed to be absolute value of difference, and so. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, there you go. I want to make sure that I had, in fact, it was in fact. <laughs> I was like, hey, so now I don't know what I wrote. <laughs> I yeah. tried to be precise and I failed again. Sorry. But now it's also consistent. I will make a pass after this and read the uh, merge master in the end, uh, main, sorry. And then, uh, oh, yeah. Um, so basically, this is all set. If nobody disagrees right now, uh, the diagram is ugly. Sorry. Um, but uh, I did not. Find I didn't very... finish reviewing it, so I can't guarantee that I won't find some other bug in the diagram. Sure. Um, uh, since I kind of got okay, down to about right. line thirteen ten before the call, so well, we're gonna put underscore law and yeah, that, right and yeah, that's uh, so someone will do that consistently across the right. That's what needs to be done. Right. Okay, so I'll finish the review. Um, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Is it? Uh, did it commit my suggestions? Yes. Okay. As long as it committed my suggestions, I think it did. No, it didn't. Okay. This is to um, wait. Always put big first. Do not use. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it didn't work, did it? Okay. I guess I just missed that. Changes to Okay, so we're going to commit this. Um, as long as we're expecting the underscore stuff to come in at a separate pull request or something. Yeah. Fine with that. Okay, I'll, um, because I just fixed the base, I'll, I'll fix this. Okay, so what next? Um, if you wait 60 more seconds, I'll be ready for you to purge the other right, one, I'll, or at least I'll review the changes this. that I've done. But I'm on the last line right now with edits, and so, okay, there's the last line. i got to commit this. i got to push it. And... Now you can open it and see if I made the right changes. Yeah, I'm just doing the same thing right now. Uh, 
right to me um, so what I want to make sure that uh, markdown does right so if you go into the rich gifts view button up top uh, I want to make sure that the underscores render right in github um, yeah you had yeah there you go uh, so example two and four okay yeah they do okay good I just want to make sure I didn't need to backslash um, uh, escape to them or something. So yeah. there's no conflicts. Uh, I think uh, because uh, William, you had the uh, blocking request changes thing. I don't, will it let you merge it even with that? That was the one line uh, inequality change that we did there. If it lets you merge it, go ahead because I think we've taken your suggestion. Okay, I will fix Hank's pull request. Uh, so what next? I will fix this one. Mm, I have not looked at any of uh, Lawrence's new ones. I see Lawrence opened new ones yesterday. I reviewed Hank's, but didn't have time to get through Lawrence's. So I don't know if those are already this time, if there's another one to look at. Fresh ones are relatively uh, concise, like uh, four two and four one. Um. I don't like the combining into the same line, which makes it harder to review, but. Yeah. I understand you've modified all three of them, so they'd show up as differences anyway. Look, at least, but I have to stare at it to notice that. So. Um, well, maybe if we do that, that'd be easier. Did we not define claim as a term? I think we did. That's why uh, Lawrence is capitalizing claim. Yes, and it's, I, I believe it's it's capitalized um, yeah. mostly in the document. Yep. Okay, I'm reading that wrong. Um, so there's a typo in the last green line where exists should not have an S at the end because a testing environment is singular. And right. Exist. That was from anyway. Uh, wait, it's oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You already noticed that. Okay. Well, you're ahead of me yeah. 12, by 12 hours. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So take that one. Um, I think grammatically, and there's no limit or requirement of places, maybe requirement on places or something like that would be. Where? Uh, 404. Uh, about the eighth word or something in 404. Uh, no, the, the, the green 404. 
let's see about the eighth word or something is places yeah yeah sorry you know you had the right uh, michael the, the word uh, no limit to or requirement of places right before places no nope, not the word of uh, advance one word later yep that one is there a better preposition there's no requirement on places or for places on the places and a testing environment can exist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that, Ned. That and then testing environment on the places and a testing environment can exist. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry, this is there's another change here. No, I just no, that's right. reading it out loud. Okay. It's whether or not a that should be there. So. I think it's think correct it either okay. way, but yeah, I think yeah. it's out of preposition. I never know. <laughs> on on the places that and a testing environment can exist. I think it's okay either way. Okay. On the places that that's your suggestion. Uh, the wrong place. Move it up a word. Left a word. There you go. Yes. yes. I prefer that. That's okay. That is okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sentence, take that. Looks okay to me. You said this one was the other one that you thought Hank you said was easy. No, I have not read that one actually. All right, well then you can. Yeah, I think that's fine since we define relying party owner as a term. I think this makes it be consistent. So sure, that looks fine to me, Lawrence. What about the comment here with the might? Is is of course stronger than might. Oh, okay. Um, I think that Lawrence's change is still consistent with what the diagram shows. <clears throat> if you go to the first diagram in the whole uh, document. I mean, because there is the uh, box. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there is a box the, 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 verifier owner. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, just go to the full editor's view. That is, of uh, course, a that one. one. Look at the far right, the far right line, and the line, and the one that you just had on the screen, Michael. Yeah, that one. The far right line. Relying party owner causes appraisal policy, and so the top right box is labeled relying party owner, and I think Lawrence's pull request changes it to say relying party owner, to which matches that line. But the comment was on might versus is. Yeah, yeah but, but I'm saying the it, diagram, how is it something else? There's nothing else there. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's my point. So that's why I think it's correct. The, the only consideration is whether or not the policy is embedded in the relying party or if it is configured by the um, the owner. But I think that it's a subtle difference, and one could argue that embedding it is is the same thing as the owner configuring it. Um, so let's actually compare it with the sentence, the first sentence. The appraisal policy for evidence might be obtained from an endorser or might be obtained via some other mechanism, such as being configured in the verifier by the verifier owner. Uh, maybe that's why it was an example used for parity with that sentence which says yeah. it could be configured by the verifier owner or maybe by somebody else. Maybe for, forget the fact that it could come from the endorser, right? The or might be obtained phrase via some other mechanism such as, the word such as in the green there in 363 is probably why the might, for example, is there. Right. <laughs> so I'm okay with it either way. Huh. 
I, it sounds like William prefers might be. I like the is because um, it's, I think it's sharper and I don't like the idea of sort of important characteristics or data items or configurations coming sort of from ambient or, you know, not specified places. I mean, the, 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 well, the arrows in that diagram are there for a reason and they really are showing something. And if, if something important is coming from somewhere else, there should be an arrow for it. Well, that I'm not sure I agree with that there has to be an arrow for every possible thing because it's an example. But um, I think Ned, what you're asking, Ned, what you suggested is there might be some case with the appraisal policy for attestation results to say hard coded into the relying party code, in which case it wasn't configured by the owner, it, other than the owner may have installed that code on there or something. So right, right. <clears throat> well, it says is configured in the relying party. Right, it's, so that can be the code by the relying party owner, which is, you know, well, yeah, we, I, I think the, say, the is the is is. What if we say using, is typically? That's fine too, um, but I think, but either way, I think it can be interpreted correctly by just using the word is. Yeah. Because uh, it's 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 purposefully not identifying the entity that is doing the making the change or doing the configuration. So I guess so, I, I would so, suggest is typically, but I don't feel strongly. Way. I, I'm fine with is. Okay. It's, it's less. It, Way is it, on the call, right? Yes. Yeah, he is. Okay. I don't know if he has audio because he hasn't spoken up yet. Maybe, Maybe if you try to talk, we cannot hear you. <laughs> Type in the chat. It's late at night there. Okay. Um, well, I don't see, I'm not hearing a resounding, it must be changed. Mm -hmm. And I'm not hearing that a preference for going back to, for example, mm -hmm. but uh typically is typically maybe that would satisfy the the not quite agreement here i don't i don't know i i really like is i don't like this sort of a squishy background kind of things coming in from from shadowy places that, that are we don't well, really describe <laughs> well it it's more i think opening that it's not the only way I would say is what I think people are trying to get at is that. It's like saying um, in my security kernel, I have a security policy that's hardwired and it was written by the manufacturer. <clears throat> and then you could say another part of the <clears throat> behavior of the system is based on a policy that's configured by an owner. <clears throat> both uh, at the end of the day, both policies affect the security behavior of the system. One was, you know, written by one entity, the other by another entity, but you can't really, you know, at the end of the day, the behavior is one behavior. And we we presume that the, whatever, whatever work was done by the manufacturer was okay by the owner, uh, you know, for practical reasons, the owner can't write, uh, uh, you know, some of the code that's in the system, yet he agrees with it, so. So then let's say that the, the appraisal policy uh, might be pre-configured into the relying party code, or it might be con uh, configured by Dy the dy owner. dynamically configured by re relying party by the owner. I, I agree with that. Yeah. So do you want to say, um, do you want to say, do you want to insert something here about it being pre-configured? Or do you want to put an or? Well, I think it's both. It, it might be oh, pre-configured or. Yeah. I meant do you want to uh, put something before the is, or do you want to say is configured? Um, um, I meant is programmed here. Is either programmed into the relying party. Uh, or is configured. Yeah, that's fine. 
Okay. I'm just going to put that on the same line like this. Right. Or, or both, but maybe that's implied. Uh, I can put or both, but um, I want inclusive or rather than exclusive or, right. I think is the point. That okay? Yep. Um, what do you mean by or both? It, it's whether you interpret or as inclusive or exclusive. I don't know in English well, what the right well, way is. Okay, let me rephrase. Um, in what case would it be inclusive? Are you saying one overwrites the other, or do you mean that it is a combination? It, That's what I mean by what do you mean by or both? It augments. It, it, either. Okay, because I'm just observing that or both does not appear in the uh, previous paragraph where the same point would be true, right? Yeah, Between you'd have to the fix that up. And the owner, yeah. You'd have to fix them up, both of them to be similar. Uh, hang on here. So it, it, you're talking about line green three, 363. We don't mention the program. Right. right. Because it might be very typical for some stuff to be come in from the endorsements and other stuff to come in from the verifier owner. And the effective one is the combination of those two together, which is your point down here too. Mm hmm. So are you happy with and or? Um, yes, although um, I would swap the order of the two things listed in there uh, only because uh, the diagram shows relying party owner. And so I would rather list first the one that's shown as the typical one in the diagram. If we just swap the order of the two phrases, then yeah. Yeah, that's much better. Yep, I'm fine with that. Um, and then the question is in line 362, do you want to change that or to be an and or? Three sixty-two is my question. Okay. Merge. Okay, it's pretty much the top of the hour. I have fixed rebased Hanks. I'm gonna we go. I'm gonna go and remove my pull request since we just. Uh, going through those because I put the pull request on the sentence that couldn't make sense. So, so just uh, that's, uh, right. no. that's wrong. That should have quotes around it. Sorry, let me fix that. Okay, I removed my request changes.
All right, so I'm going to commit this, and that's all for today. And then we're going to fix the diagrams to have the consistency for yeah. them. Yeah, we still need to do like underscores and stuff in this one, but yeah, that's fine. It's a separate pull request. I deleted all the other branches. All right, so I'll talk to you guys next week um, then. So on that one, Hank actually asked a question that would be useful for us to see whether we have agreement on. If you just go back one thing in the browser in his comment on 145. I mean, in the, you can see, um, no, no, not, 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 not in the text in the uh, pull request description. Uh, he says, also a background check version might be perceived as missing. Do we need one? Question. Oh yeah, because yeah. before we had a two by two matrix of examples, meaning background check versus passport for nonce versus timestamp, and this adds a third value to the nonce versus timestamp access. So now it's nonce timestamp and handle. And so I mean, it's six. now, well, that's, that's a question. There are six theoretical ones. Do we actually need to add the sixth one, or do we think that? Uh, adding the sixth one would not add any other information. I mean, should we add a tiny one that says, oh, and this one is the same? Um, that's the qu open question there. And could you ask the working group? Sure. For the also reason of making them read the document. This, this was a question that Hank and I had talked about last week and we didn't have a strong answer to it, but that's why Hank, I think you copied the question in here because that is a topic we discussed, so. Exactly. Yeah, let's ask the working group, and uh, that, that I think that's a good way to engage them. Okay. Before we uh, um, ask someone, do we want to push a uh, update? Yeah. Do you want me to push the update? I can push an update today. Um, I would say, Hank, if you can get the underscores in there and oh. push the update, uh, I'd yeah. or, well. Does that means uh, right, something yeah, without yeah, us yeah. having a chance to review it? So it depends on how fast we can get the review done. So if you can generate it, I can review it, but I don't know if we want to go ahead and merge it or what. So okay, it doesn't, okay. That doesn't is about a day. So I will, I will, yeah. yes, this PR should be in, otherwise, it would be weird. And then uh, yeah. we can, I can uh, address your yeah. um, because I, I say that, Michael, because we're going to be calling in, in Hank's question, if he sends it to the list, then we're going to be calling yeah. attention to these sections, and then people are going to just point out, well, what's this underscore in one place, not the other place? So I can do the underscores if <laughs> Hank can't do it. I can do that today and, okay. and uh, get you to review it, because that will okay. be probably working our time zone-wise. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Talk to you guys soon. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.